So in this video, I want to talk about what I think is the uh, greatest skill that an artist can have, or another way uh, to put it would be, you know, really the skill that's the foundation of painting realism. And that is the ability to see color and to see value, um, really to see value even more than to see color. But what I mean by that is if I was to uh, set a vase on a table and, you know, sit there and try and, and, and I was going to paint it, and I go to my palette and I mix up a cut. If I look into the shadow of the vase and I say, what is that color there right in the shadow of that white vase? I should be able to go to my palette, mix up a color and match that color um, and maybe not get it perfect, but get, you know, really close um, and not just be totally off in left field like almost everybody who's, you know, an amateur who's never painted before is. And so the, the, and the way that you learn to see uh, value and to see color, uh, in, my, in my view, the way that I teach it, um, is, to, is through color checking. And, you know, if you're working from life, you're using a color checker. And I've got a video that teaches how you can make one. And I've got videos that explain how to use it. So I don't want to get into, you know, detail about specifics of, you know, the color checker tool, which is used for working from life. Um, if you're working from a photo... You know, you can laminate your photo and just wipe your paint right on the photo and check your colors that way. But by through this color checking, and, and color checking is not something that you would do, um, at, you know, there's a lot of times it's not, you're not, it's not possible to color check. You know, a lot of times when you're plain air painting, you know, the sky's putting glare all over your color checker or, you know, you're in the sh shade of a tree and you're painting a sunlit, uh, you know, meadow or whatever. It's simply not possible to do any color checking. So what I teach is to, is, uh, is to use color checking under controlled lighting, or if you're working from a photo, you can, you can always use it that way. But to start, um, as you learn to paint, to do a lot of color checking, and through that um, color checking is how you learn to see value in color. And, you know, <clears throat> for when people first start color checking for the first time, I mean, it's almost a universal experience for people to, you know, be shocked by the colors that they see. You know, you can't believe that the, sh the color of the white vase is, is so dark. And it's, it's almost shocking the first time you do it. So when you start color checking for the first time, you're just all off in left field and it just seems like, you know, you're just completely blown away by the, the reality of the colors that, you know, you thought, they, you thought they were this, but they're really that. But then the more you do it, and after you've, you know, done 10 or actually even two, but, but if you've done 10 or 20 still lifes, it really starts to get ingrained and you're simply not surprised anymore. I mean, you can only be surprised so much. So you sit there and you, you try to, you know, you're matching your colors. And over, over time, you start to develop this ability to see it because you, you stop being surprised. So color checking through, through color checking, deliberate color checking. And I won't get into exactly how to do that. I've got whole videos. You know, if you go to my method, if you go to drawmixpaint.com, just go to how to paint in oil. And I'll give you the whole, you know, how to uh, use the, the um, color checker in painting. And I've got other videos that are specifically about color checking. But um, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about in this video, and that is the advantages of working from a photograph versus uh, working from life. And I used to, you know, two or three years ago, I used to say that, you know, really sort of pushed working from life um, because if you're working from a photograph, one of the tendencies is to just stare at the detail and to overpaint the detail. But when you're working from life, where your still life is four feet away or, you know, whatever it is, you tend to generalize more, which is a good thing. But on the other hand, um, when you're doing your real uh, color checking, uh, there's some things that you can miss when you're working from life. And even, you know, even myself with a, you know, pretty trained eye and I really know how to use a color checker, when you're looking at, a, at an edge, like, like in this example here, if you look at this uh, edge as it's turning into shadow, right there on that edge, there's a really dark value. And that dark color is something that you simply can't see because it's such a small little area. You can hold out a color checker, and if you're looking at the same thing you know, in life, you're simply not going to be able to see that little sl you know, sliver. So there's some detail that's nice to know about. It's nice to know that every edge, almost, as it turns into shadow on the bottom you know, of an object, is going to go you know, right into that dark color. It's going to have that step. 
And so, you know, you, when you're working from a photograph, you can get a toothpick out and, you know, put a little color on it and really see what the color's doing in detail. So that's just the difference. Uh, and so what I would suggest is that, that you, you know, if you're going to work from photographs and that's your thing and that's, you know, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're painting, you know, horses or animals, you know, there's a huge advantage to working from photographs because, you know, they don't stay still. And, you know, and that goes for portraits and everything else. But if you're working from life, I think there's a real advantage. And, you know, if you're painting still lives or you have people that can sit for you, you know, being able to generalize like that and not, you know, overly uh, focus on the detail is a great thing. And um, so I highly, I still think it's a great idea to, to work from life. But I do think that working from photographs in terms of color checking and really seeing what the color's doing in detail, um, that, that's something that I would recommend. Um, so um, anyway, this skill you know, that, that um, any artist can develop is something that you absolutely can learn. It's not something that is magical at all. You know, everybody that I've ever taught to paint um, you know, who's done this on, on a regular basis for any, you know, even two or three paintings is uh, develops this ability to start to see the color, um, certainly after, you know, 20 paintings. So anyway, that's enough about that. Um, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.